a day to all of you, the relatively recent Salvador Sanchez Azuma Nelson fight for the WBC version of the featherweight championship of the world. However, in the light of the tragic accidental death of Salvador on Thursday past, we have elected not to do so. Instead, we are going to pay tribute to this exceptional young champion through his fighting exploits, his origins, beginnings, and insight to the kind of young person he truly was. You must keep in the back of your mind the pertinent facts that he was the youngest ever to achieve the featherweight crown since Willie Pep, and that he had succeeded in defending his title nine times consecutively. Now the tribute. It was February 2, 1980, when Salvador Sanchez, at the age of 21, a relative unknown, became the WBC featherweight champion of the world. The opponent, considered a great champion, was Danny Little Red Lopez, a great puncher. Here in the early going, Sanchez was able to do what many had done to Lopez, clean up on him, build up a lead, but most couldn't sustain Sanchez could sustain. As you see here, in the 13th round, it was over for Little Red. Greatly conditioned and with remarkable stamina, Sanchez showed steadily the ability to come from behind. His first defense was against Ruben Castillo from Bakersfield, California, in Tucson, Arizona, April 12, 1980. Castillo fought cleverly, even brilliantly, built up a lead. But then, in the late rounds, it was all Sanchez as he won the decision. Then he would go against Danny Little Red Lopez again. And it was almost an instant replay of the first time. Little Red gave it everything he had, but he was facing a better man, and he knew it. And in the 14th round, the fight had to be stopped as Lopez wobbled across the ring. And then perhaps the fight that brought Sanchez finally the recognition he deserved against Wilfredo Gomez, considered by many to be perhaps the best puncher of his era, inch for inch and pound for pound. In the very first round, Sanchez, a two to one underdog, Claude Gomez, and then finally toe to toe against a legendary puncher. In the same manner as against Lopez, it was over for Gomez. He was rendered helpless, and Sanchez had proved himself a truly great champion, though only 23 years of age. And, of course, he was heralded then. He had waited a long time for it in boxing terms, though still a kid. He came from a sleepy little Mexican town in the hills outside Mexico City, the town known as Santiago Tanguistenco. Those who knew him knew that he was untouched by his status as a national hero and a world champion. He was one of 11 children, remained close to his parents, his younger brothers and sisters. And the great thing about the kid was that he never forgot what he might have been if it hadn't been for his success at boxing because he might have been one of those field workers working under a scorching sun in a blistering heat. Every morning he would run by them as if to remind himself that this was what he might have been. But no, he wasn't that at all. And so he kept himself super Herbly trained and conditioned. Even when he would relax, he would do it with a buoyant enthusiasm and in a manner to sustain the very condition that enabled him to be the champion he became. Of course, he had only one affectation, sports cars. It was a love, maybe not an affectation, but a love that would ultimately cost him his very life because on Thursday past, that accident and death at the age of 23. The funeral was a sad occasion, but it was a proud occasion too, 
because the Mexican people were so proud of him. And he was a proud young man, proud because of what he had achieved. Juan Laporte was a man he had faced in the past and defeated, was about to face again in some three weeks. And yet, though an opponent, Laporte tells what developed between them. He used to call me Juanito, you know? And we used to call, they call him a chavo, so we used to call him chavo. And, you know, we, we had something going, you know, like friendship. We, and losing him like that, you know, that's bad because um, I know a lot of kids out there, you know, love him as well as everybody else out here. And it's just, it's bad to see a person, you know, like that go away. It was a cold blow to me. It was a hard thing for me to take. I wasn't really on a one-to-one -one base with him, a, a close friend or anything, but but a, a man who came in and took the title for me, and I consider myself a, a pretty good champion at the time, and he came and he showed me he was better. And to hear that he was he's dead at the age of 23 was, uh, was hard to take. When one is but 23 years of age and dies tragically in an accident, there is no fulfillment for the fullness of life, no opportunity to do all of the things you wanted to do. In Salvador's case, his dream was to retire in another year, study, become a doctor. But no, no chance of that. Under the circumstances, it seems the best thing to do is to let his athletic skills, magnificent as they were, speak for themselves. In this, his last fight against tough Azuma Nelson, July 21 pass at Madison Square Garden in New York City. It was the final round ever of his career and perhaps symbolically the final round of his life. of the 15th round and a winner by a TKO and still the World Boxing Council featherweight champion.